Johnny Long with No Tech Hacking. I know some of you guys um, have heard about a lot of the nonprofit stuff he's been doing. He's, Johnny Long is a tremendous force for positive good in the community. I know he's probably not going to mention a whole lot of that. You're all here to hear No Tech Hacking. But guys, give Johnny Long a huge round of applause for everything he does in the community and what he's going to be talking about right now. Thank you very much. Hi. I like when it's more conversational like that. It's, it's nice. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Thank you. Okay, that's enough. Yo. Hey, what's up, man? Front row seat. Good friend Blue Boar sitting in the front row. It's a rare treat. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show of hands, how many people have seen this talk? Okay. Everybody look at the people that put their hands up. Because those are the people that could ruin it for me. <laughs> All right, if you've seen this talk, you know there's like some surprises and there's like some fun stuff. Those people that put their hands up can kill it dead. Just make the talk suck. So if you're, if you're near them and they start to make the talk suck, just <laughs> ask them to stop. So. All right, so let me give my intro. Uh, you don't look at me when I do the intro, you look there. This is me, and as most of you know, I do this. I'm a devoted one of these, which some people think is this, and some people think is this. Whatever you think it is, I'm definitely not one of these, unless it's this kind. I'm also a professional one of these, although I'm not dead yet, I'm more like one of these without the bad haircut. Uh, I'm, I must be one of these because every time I load a page like this in my browser, it autofills this. <laughs> I'm also one of these for these nice folks, as evidenced by all of this. Yeah, I'm proud to say that uh, I don't have to take sides in this debate because I'm both. I know you're skeptical, but I'm actually a practicing one of these because I'm a student of this, which translates into this, which most of you know is this. Uh, I currently have this, I'm very close to getting this, but I'm also one of these, uh, like this, but not the Lego kind, more like this, the cool kind. <laughs> uh, but in all honesty, I'm a blood relative of this guy, who most of you know better from this picture. <laughs> so even though I'm this and this and this and this and this, uh, I'm pretty passionate about my role as this. I'm the founder of this which uh, some of you like better by this name. <laughs> so what we do is we put hackers to work on charitable projects in exchange for references from industry leaders. So these can get these by designing things like this. Uh, we also build classrooms like this using donated equipment like this and this so that children in underdeveloped countries can attend computer classes like this. The idea is that they'll become self-sufficient, which is really the only way to break the cycle of poverty. So if you want to do this, for these, or if you're tired of doing this, and you'd like to land that real job, come to us to get some of this by working with us. So stop by our website, send us lots of money, buy a t-shirt, or buy the No Tech Hacking book, all proceeds go to feed African children. That's it, Joe. Okay, but most of you aren't here for that, you're here for the talk. Uh, this, this is not a talk about high technology, which is stuff like this, which is you know, wireless and viruses and Trojans <laughs> and uh, <laughs> password cracking and lock picking and packet sniffing and, and all that stuff. This is not about no tech. This is not about high tech. This is about no tech, which is the uh, subject of this book. Uh, before, I, before I give you an idea of what this is, uh, let me just tell you where this idea came from. I worked with this guy named Vince who was into physical security and the guy was an absolute legend. You know, the first gig that I went on with this guy 
we had to break into this really secure facility that had this immense door that, you know, one of these skiff looking doors, you, you drive a truck in to the door, the truck bounces, that kind of door. We had to break into this facility. And so we're, we're outside sort of milling around and Vince is watching people go in and out. And I'm thinking, you know, based on this guy's reputation, I see the little prox reader over there and I'm thinking he's gonna break out like the alligator clips, right? He's, he's gonna do something with like a, an LCD screen and there's gonna be like an odometer flipping, you know, like in the movies. Or there's gonna be like that Mission Impossible thing where you get really close to the floor and then sweat on it and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But after a few minutes, Vince goes, I gotta go. I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I don't really know this guy, so I'm thinking it's like some stomach virus or something. I wanna honor that. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, let's, let's go. We drive back to the hotel, parks out front, he comes out, and after a few minutes, he's, he's got this, uh, He's got a wire coat hanger and a wet washcloth. I'm still thinking stomach disorder. <laughs> we drive back to the building. It's like 6.30, it's after working hours. Uh, nobody's really around, obviously government facility. He walks up to the door and while he's walking up to the door, he's fiddling with this coat hanger. He makes it into a long piece of wire. He puts the coat hanger on the end, folds the whole thing in half, walks up to the door, jams the coat hanger through the crack in the center of the door, slides it down and starts flapping it around. I hear it on the other side of the door, flap, 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 click. I hear the door unlock. He goes in, walks right through, leaves me on the sidewalk, <laughs> looking at the security camera. <laughs> What he had done was defeat this multi-million dollar security system with like trash. <laughs> I mean, trash and treasure thing, right? He took this to a whole new level. And when I finally got up the nerve to just go into the building with him, I was like, dude, what was that about? And he's like, didn't you look at the door? I said, well, yeah, there, you know, there was a push bar on the back of the thing. He's like, no, it wasn't a push bar, it was a touch bar that doesn't know the difference between a wet washcloth and a human hand. So I learned a lesson about touch bars, but the really important lesson that I learned was how to not complicate things. Now, you've been through this, through this conference and probably several others, and you've heard all sorts of high-tech solutions for breaking stuff, and I think those are incredibly cool, don't get me wrong. My point is, I think there's a lot of room for simple situations, you know, solving problems in simple ways, and that's what this is about. Uh, but because this is a hacker conference and it's not your, you know, corporate suit and tie conference, I'm going to give you the lowdown on what this really is because we're going to drop skills. I'm going to teach you how to do some unbelievable things. <laughs> True to the spirit of a conference like Hope, I'm going to teach you these things, the real Jedi wave. I'm going to show you how x-ray vision works. I'm going to show you how to blend in with the feds, how to pass through walls in a puff of smoke, get into locked cabinets without using your hands, hacked, hack workstations with one keystroke, suck data off machines with your mind, sniff email and network traffic without a computer, and defeat physical security with trash and stuff. How's that sound? I like this because it's like an issue of 2600 or something. This is, this is great. All right, so skill number one, x-ray vision, seeing through people. Now, I know that the guys in the audience are thinking something else. This is, this, you can't use this skill for that. This is really a specific sort of thing. And, and as you'll see as we go through here, uh, I like messing with words, so there's lots of puns here. So uh, it's not really seeing through people, it's seeing through the facade to get to who a person really is. For example, this guy. What can you tell me about this guy? He's sitting, excellent. You've got a future in this. He's at the airport, very good, very good. He's got a hat, this is great. We're warming up. I heard ex-military, why? The footwear, the haircut, the boots. Anybody know the brand name for those? It, high tech, the irony is thick, isn't it? <laughs> high tech boots, very nice. He's also got the sleeves rolled up, which says an awful lot about him. Uh, he's, he's watching stewardesses walk by, that says something else. Uh, so he's probably straight. The Oakleys. Now, there's a nickname for this style of Oakley. I've heard them referred to as shooters uh, because people that wear them shoot. 
Uh, there's also the thing that's written on the back of his hat. Can anybody read that? It says, Benet it's not bananas, that's different too. It's BenelliUSA.com. Anybody know what Benelli is? Shotguns. Yes. Now, they don't just make shotguns for like shooting ducks, <laughs> right? <laughs> they shoot shotguns that like blow up tanks and stuff. I mean, like, I guess. I was in the military, obviously, because shotguns don't blow up tanks, but uh, <laughs> they sell special purpose guns. So he's in the airport, Benelli USA hat. Now, you can get an idea of this guy's profile, but there's one piece of information missing. This guy pre-boarded my flight by himself. <laughs> right, Sky Marshal. Uh, the irony is he's not just a Sky Marshal, he's an undercover Sky Marshal. <laughs> All right, so you see how this works, seeing through people, taking a look at somebody, observing, figuring stuff out. What can you tell me about this guy? <laughs> I'll, I'll go with the married one instead. That's, that's good. Married, good. He's literate. He's literate. Right. The, the magazine is not upside down. That's, that's good. Vitamin E deficiency. He's got that. Anything else? What's the yellow tag? No, I'm not peeing. The yellow tag is his, uh, his baggage, that's his baggagey thing. Um, that's good because that's a, that's a transfer tag. It means he's come from somewhere. All right, he's also got a vitamin E deficiency. I'm not sure if you picked that up. There's other stuff that you can look at to figure out some stuff about this guy. What would you use? Uh, seal. Uh, yeah, somebody's picking up the seal on the bag. See it on the floor there? Here's the seal. U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Now, I know for a fact that he didn't get this at their conference because their conference sucks. <laughs> so he probably works for the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and uh, we can get more information about him by looking at things like his sky mile tags, all this stuff. So my question to you is, is, do you think that the information about where the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission is headed and when is valuable? I would, I would guess that it probably is. So here's a guy from said agency, right? Traveling around, he's probably security conscious, right? Yeah, the bag. <laughs> well, lives in Atlanta. That was hardcore. You actually know the dude? <laughs> Fed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I want to draw your attention to the blurred areas in this photo. See him on the sides? That's, that's my arm and my side because I'm taking the picture with my back to him, like putting the camera in my armpit, shooting like this. It's an advanced ninja move. It's very delicate. <laughs> like that one. No, that was the computer nerd move. That's different. Um, yeah, well, the, the funny thing is, I think after a while, this guy caught on to what I was doing. <laughs> Funny thing is, he didn't do anything about it. That's also sort of the sad part. I'm in an airport, creepy looking guy taking pictures of him and his stuff. I mean, he's sitting next to an undercover air marshal, for God's sakes. He could have told him, but he didn't. Okay, one more. What can you tell me about this guy? Yep, he works out. Good. No, he... That's right. No, actually, you're seeing half of it. This is from Dark Knight. This is Two-Face. The other side's... The other side's good. But yeah, military. Married, good. The Iron Man. Okay, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. What else can you tell us about him? What uh, operating system is he using? Good. Uh, let's confirm the military thing. U.S. military casualty statistics. Uh, he reports to a lieutenant colonel. There's the uh, subject of his email. So looking at people is one thing. Okay, but I've also employed another skill here. This is skill number two, sucking data off of machines with your mind. And you tell people you can do this. You got to keep this close held, right? You know, like a magician has a trick. He tells people how it's done and it sucks. You got to not tell people how it's done. Just tell them that you have the skill and they'll be like, ooh. <laughs> All right, but it used to be called something else. It used to be called shoulder surfing. Uh, now it's sucking data off machines with your mind. <laughs> There's a definite art to shoulder surfing. Uh, you have to be pretty bold to do it. I'm not very bold. I mean, do I look like the kind of guy that's just going to wander around hovering over people's shoulders, <laughs> taking pictures of their laptops, regardless of where they are? That's why you're so good at it. That's why I'm so good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah, I, I do this. I